Hi, my name is David Nightingale. I'm a photographer and Photoshop instructor based in Bulgaria and Eastern Europe. Um, I also work out of Blackpool in the northwest of England. I'm here today to talk to you about points of view, how to change the angle you shoot from using the Panasonic GF1, a great little camera, 20mm uh, f1.7 lens. I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks you can do to create unique and interesting shots. One of the things you need to think about when taking photographs is your, your point of view. So this isn't just about composition, it's about where you place yourself in relation to the elements that you're photographing. So typically if you go out, out and about to any tourist location you'll see the, the photographers with cameras on tripods at eye level or people standing there holding their cameras to their faces taking pictures. Often that isn't the best perspective to take and there's two reasons for that. The first, that's the same shot that everybody else will be taking. Second, if you take a shot from a different angle, you're going to produce something slightly more interesting. So if you take a look at this example here, this is a, a children's spade. It's, it's only about three foot high. So to get the spade to bisect the horizon, you're about one and a half feet off the ground. So you're quite low to the ground here. This is, this is probably one of my favourite techniques. This is kind of a, a, a bit of a silly shot. This is uh, taken out in a, it was a landscape course that I ran out in the desert. And I asked the students to bring along some props. And I was expecting water bottles and sandals and things that were relevant to the desert. Uh, one guy turned up with Spider-Man and a plastic dinosaur. And it turned out to be one of my favourite shots. You get really low to the ground and you've got this imposing Spider-Man figure who in reality is about as big as he appears on screen here. It's about six inches tall. One of the other benefits of getting low to the ground is that you can change the sense of scale. So you can look at this image and you, you, you're not entirely sure what you're looking at. This is actually only about six inches high, but because I've got very low, I've got the camera actually on the ground, you have this imposing structure on the right. Again, it's something you kind of walk past if you weren't thinking about what you're looking for. It's also especially important for photographs of children. So when people ask me, you know, how can I improve my children's photography, and they show me their images, they're taken not from here, but from up here. So they're standing there taking pictures of their children playing. Now that's the kind of view we see all the time. We walk around as adults, we see our children, the smaller people, they're on the ground. If you get down, you kind of immerse the viewer in what's going on. You create the sense of you're partaking of their game, rather than photographing it from an adult perspective. And again, here's another example. So by getting down really low, my daughter here is, is cutting the horizon and you feel like you're taking part. You, you, you're immersed in the activity rather than looking at it as a, as a sort of distant observer. One of the things, again, that you need to be thinking about is looking up and looking down. So here, here's a great example. This is just my daughter watching television. It's just a grab shot that I've, I've taken with a very shallow depth of field and you create this. It's a different perspective. It's something interesting. It's, it's too easy to take everyday shots and not think about the composition, but by standing above it and looking down I've created a much more unique type of shot. One other thing to think about is what else do you include in the frame? So these, these lads playing football down on Dubai Beach. By going behind the net we've, we've got this nice sort of intricate structure, but we've also we've, we've still got them there. But we've added interest because we're again shooting low from the ground, you've got this framing, you've got the curves, you've got the lines, and it contextualises what's going on. So I've included the net, which normally you think, right, I'm, I need to be somewhere else, I don't want the net in the shot. But by including it, it makes it much more interesting. And again, you can, you can create slightly more mysterious effects by thinking about how you're going to use the elements in the scene. So here, um, another of my daughters, she stood in a, in, a in a tree. So what you see down the front here is just blur blurry leaves. But it creates, it creates quite an interesting effect. You've just got one eye, some, some detail here, and she's kind of partially hidden by one of the other elements. Now normally you might think about getting round so you can see all of her face, but by moving and deliberately using something you normally exclude, you create a more interesting image. The other thing you can think about is, is creating a more abstract image by taking a particular angle. So this is an old, the hull of an old boat. Um, so to explain the size, this is perhaps 15 feet across. It's not a huge boat but I'm stood directly underneath the hull. So what you get is kind of just a leaf shape of detail. You can probably, sometimes people can work out it's a boat, sometimes they need to ask me, the kind of the clue here is this rope coming down the side. But by thinking about the angle, instead of standing back and taking the whole boat, by going right underneath and shooting up, you create a much more interesting effect. One other thing to think about is, uh, one of the things I like doing is shooting reflections. 
So next time you're out and uh, it's a bright day, go and, go and put your eye next to a window and see what you can see. Often you'll find a very, very clear reflection that even two feet from the window you won't really notice. If you get your camera up against the glass, you can support it on the glass so you don't need a tripod, um, you'll find these very strong reflections that are often, often very interesting to photograph. So here's another example here. In fact, in some ways, perhaps I like this one a little bit better. You know, you've got the, you've got the guy walking towards himself. And again, this is, this is just a window on the corner of a building. So no, nothing, nothing clever about this. It's not a double exposure. There's no, there's no real post-production trickery. It's just putting yourself into, a, into an unusual position, a place that you wouldn't normally stand to take the photograph. What you can also think about is, well, normally, if you again, this is one of my daughters jumping in the sea. Now, normally, you'd be thinking about photographing her and the sea, and you know the, the shot would be up here. But sometimes it's worth just taking a portion of the scene because it can tell a better story. So here, it doesn't it doesn't matter who she is. It doesn't matter where her arms are. It doesn't matter whether she's smiling. And you've got you've got this this action in the water. She's jumped up. And you've, got, you've just got a hint of a skirt at the top there. You've got her legs. And it, it's, not, it's not abstract, but it's, it's certainly perhaps a bit more interesting than the original shot would have been. And finally, just another very simple example of this. You know, you've got, it's about colour and it's about the, the, the person just walking off into the distance. So again, it's a, it's a way of thinking about composition, thinking about what you're going to shoot, thinking about the point of view that you are going to take as a photographer.